So I hopped off on this rock and I was kind of just watching, observing. All of a sudden I see a laser come my way and I reached for my horn and three shots went off as I hit my horn. Yeah, it was like ceasefire. And, yeah. and one of the rounds just kind of barely grazed me. So there was only this much room between my hand and my leg. Well, so he put three rounds like in there somewhere. Welcome to Combat Story. I'm Ryan Fugit and I serve war zone tours as an army attack helicopter pilot and CIA officer over a 15 year career. I'm fascinated by the experiences of the elite in combat. On this show, I interview some of the best to understand what combat felt like on their front lines. This is Combat Story. This is our first joint combat story where we bring two combat veterans on the show to talk about combat ops they were a part of together. This time, we're fortunate to have Sam Mackey and Joel McGuire, both former SEALs, who speak about some of the toughest moments they had deployed to Afghanistan as a team. I always wanted to have two guys who fought side by side on the show to see what they remember, where they each have gaps, and to watch the bond firsthand that was forged in those difficult moments downrange. For those who listened to the individual interviews with both Sam and Joel, you'll recall that Sam was somewhat of a free agent SEAL at the time, being shipped to various teams to support operations for weeks or months at a time, given his unique sniper skill set. Joel, on the other hand, was leading a team at a smaller and undermanned FOB that needed all the help they could get and welcomed Sam with open arms. They forged a lifetime friendship as a result of that time downrange. Please enjoy two seasoned vets getting down to what actually happened on particular ops when they were downrange together. Well, welcome for the uh, for the last round here. So for those who haven't tuned in to the interviews we already did with Sam and Joel, um, this is a chance to bring you both together. And I guess just to, to set the stage here, the reason we all are in this place is, Sam, you and I got connected mm -hmm. as you were getting out of the teams and, and starting on this new endeavor with Outsider. And one thing I thought would be interesting is, was there somebody you had served with who you might bring on with you to talk through some of your experiences together? And I think we don't have a ton of opportunities to do that after you get out of the military. So mm -hmm. maybe the first thing is, when was the last time you all saw each other? A couple of years ago, it's about three or four. I'll yeah, say, because it was at, at your house Christmas. Yeah. I thought you came to my retirement party, but then that whole weekend was a massive blur. When you told me you didn't come there, I was a little surprised. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so it's been a, it's been a hot minute. It's been a while. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why I sent you that that skull to your home. Oh, that thing is awesome. Though. Can you yeah. talk about that one? Yeah, you had mentioned this Joel, after we recorded. Him. So he asked for my address and said he was going to send something. And uh, Joel's a good gift giver. Um, and I've seen the shadow boxes he's made in the past and things of that nature. But he said it was something unique. And uh, so I was excited to see what it was. And then, of course, I forgot about it. And then so I get, then I get a box from him. <clears throat> and I open it. And... It's a black skull. Um, and at first, it just looks like a, a skull. But then when you um, at first glance, like if you just glance at it. But then if you look at it closely, it has a trident in the top of the head, a buzz class number on the back. Um, and uh, what else is on it? And you have the naked warrior. Yep. And you have the bone frog. And then on one side of the skull, you have the... Um, the free faller and yet on the other side you have an assaulter and then on somewhere else there's a, a diver it's super cool so i got it and of course i put it right by the front door where you put your keys and it's been there ever since that's cool <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's not there i guess the most traditional thing to have by your front door uh, welcome yeah <laughs> but uh i set it there and katie left it so uh yeah. it, that's where that's its home now that probably says a lot that katie left it you yeah, because I think a lot of wives might get rid of something like that. <laughs> so well, Kate, that Katie loves it. Joel, you know, okay. and, it's, uh, and it's 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 cool. You know, it's super cool looking too. So you can drink from it too. You flip it upside down, <laughs> you, you can drink from it. Probably be a good thing to have when you all start dating too, to have <laughs> at the front door as guys come in. <laughs> That's, yeah. and give me a little history of back when the Vikings used to. <laughs> <laughs> So, Sam, of all the people you could choose, what, what brought Joel to mind for this? Well, we had a lot of interesting experiences together. Um, so, and so, you know, I have uh, a lot of other people came to mind, you know, also, but uh, a lot of my friends are still in the Navy, right? So, they, obviously, they can't do it. And I was just racking my brain, like, 
example, Joel's a perfect person where we, we met in a very, you know, interesting place. We did a lot of interesting things. And then, um, in Afghanistan. And then after that, uh, we both went to a training cell together where we worked, you know, side by side for two years, two years together. And, uh, that was, there's a lot of interesting evenings there too. Uh, (laughs) so, uh, I think he was a, the perfect person, you know? And, uh, so that's, that's why I chose Joel. Yeah. And maybe question for you, Joel, why, um, or, or maybe for those who haven't listened to your story yet, um, obviously you're running a, uh, what you called the, the bastard, uh, Boggs bastards, Boggs bastards. And then all of a sudden Sam comes into the equation. Can you kind of talk through, uh, number one, the scenario that you found yourself in for those who haven't heard the story yet. And then maybe the first time you all met. When we got sent to Afghanistan to do a VSO mission and uh, I got sent with too few guys. My platoon got split up in three different locations. So we, we were doing what we could with what we had, but we needed more guys. And uh, so we started getting guys from Team 10. That's where we were at. Uh, we were three troop. I got a guy from another platoon and I got the guys from other troops that are coming in, helping out, filling in. And then one day I get a talk to um, my uh, troop chief and he's like, I'm sending you a a guy from team eight. I'm like, okay. And I'd already, by this point had my OIC and I, Omar had kind of named our site. It was VSP bog and we'd named it bogs bastards because we had guys from our platoon from sister platoon from other troops different platoons you know it was just and now we're adding a guy from team eight so it was fitting you know to call it bogs bastards and it stuck how was the first encounter how do you all remember this because you're coming in from you're an unknown quantity Mm -hmm. at this point um well i met his troop commander and troop chief in clock right there on the clock yeah and uh um, I said, you know, I'm looking for some work. The Lithuanians have a notorious long turnover. And uh, then they said, oh, yeah, we got just a place for you. Now, Hilo leaves in a couple hours. And I, th- I think I left later on that day or that evening. <clears throat> then fly out to Fob Lane. Yeah. And uh, you and your OIC are waiting on me. And um, then I think you're about to do or you just had some sort of resupply via airdrop for MREs or... For Gatorades or something like that. Water and all kinds of stuff. Um, And so I meet him there and it was easy right off the get. Um, OIC is super cool. Um, Joel's super cool. Like, hey, we're going to hang out here, do some stuff, and then we're going to drive down um, to uh, uh, to Bog. Which, how far we drive was that? That's 7K. Yeah. And uh, the road's a little little dicey, you know, um, at that time. worry about IEDs and things like that. So, but no drama. We got there and everyone else was on like a three day op somewhere. Right. right? Now we're getting ready to go. We just got back. Sorry. I think we just got back. No, I, I think everyone was, I think it was just me, you, OIC and some army guys because that it was a pretty uh-huh. uneventful first night. Right. So I get back and like, Oh yeah, here's the room. Here's where everything. There was just one, armory room it was just another mud hut they're all mud huts you know we're leaving mud huts and then uh, they're like oh yeah be careful there's a cobra up in the like thatching and uh, i'm like oh, it's one, one more thing to worry about i guess and then uh uh i shared a room with joel and though i see i forget who else in that room and i had a top bunk the top bunk is real high right so close to the cobra the, the thatching is no this is a different mud hut okay, right. but granted it's you know 15 yards away from the other ones and, and uh and the thatching was only like, you know, a foot away from my face. I'm like, no one might like that. I'm going to wake up and that fucking snake's going to be like staring at my <laughs> face. And I'm going to because I get bit on the cheek by a snake. But anyway, uh, that never happened. Go to bed and wake up and there's a lot of commotion in the morning. And uh, I don't think anything of it. I'm like, what? you know, someone came running in. There's some sort of like little emergency or um, like, okay, so I get out of bed and um, though I seen him bolt out of the room, I get out of bed. I think I brush my teeth and, you know, uh, put a shirt on and, uh, I put some mouthwash in and I walk out and 
there's a guy without legs. There's like some, I forget who else was in there, but I think there was a couple of casualties already in there. Yeah. And uh, I spit the mouthwash out. I'm like, oh shit, I guess I should have came out here a little earlier. Jeez. And uh, uh, so our partner force, um, some guys crap in the middle of the night and planting IDs in their little uh, um, security stations. Yeah. Yeah. And a uh, post. Yeah. And then the morning, the guy walked in, stepped on it. So, um, I, I'm, then I walk over and I start helping this, this army medic out and, uh, and Joel and Omar are going to work, you know, up and out and getting spin up medevac and, um, everything of that nature. And then I think we take some small arms fire, get mortared or something like that. Yeah, both. Um, and so um, Joel's like, Hey, grab your 300 wind mag and head to the top of that hill and bring this army guy. And, uh, I'm like, all right, cool. Went up there and. Uh, I find myself in a little interesting spot and it's a real good vantage point and I, I see something um, behind a rock. I'm like, ah, but our the partner force, I'm still learning them, right? And they had black uh, like, like, like uh, pants, camis. Yeah. And I didn't know if like, is this a guy, like a bad guy or yeah. something? I'm like, I was just about to move to this spot, maybe like 10 yards away. And uh um, to get a better vantage point. And I saw that guy, so I held tight. And the army guy I'm with, you know, um, we're just up there getting sunburnt, right? And looking for these guys. And uh, that's when the rest of the boys rolled back. I'd been up there a couple hours and they came back from a, another op. And uh, um, like, all right, cool. Everything subsided and uh, go ahead and come back down. Well, I stand up and then I get a freeze, 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 like pretty quick. And I'm like, well, what's going on? Like, and the ICOM chatter, they're listening to it like, oh, yeah, he's going to hit the ID. And I, I think I was the only guy outside the HUD at that time. So one of our great mutual friends, uh, so I'm sitting up there. I'm, I'm in dolphin shorts, my 300 wind bag, my kit. And the Army guy has an A-dub. And I don't think he had a shirt on in his kit and oh. dolphin shorts, right? Or ranger panties, whatever you want to call them. And uh, then we get like the freeze, freeze, freeze. I'm like, oh, great. I'm like, so the ID around. Then uh, our friend he's a eod guy he walks up makes the trek up the whole the hill with his uh with his, yeah with his uh what's it called shackle yeah the mineral detector and uh he gets by me he's like just hold tight and goes over and it's, it's right actually where i was going to go lay he goes oh here it is and uh he, then he cleared us a spot behind a rock um not too far away and he's like hold tight goes over and puts you know a charge on it and blows it up and uh so I got real lucky that I saw that guy because yeah. that's exactly where I was going to move. Um, and uh, but this EOD guy is hilarious, right? So I'm behind a rock. He goes boom, and it, I mean it's a big bang. He says something to the effect of like, whew, "She was a little bigger than I thought she was going to be," you know. <laughs> they always had comments. They, they always had comments. Was he one of the two EOD guys that you mentioned? The yes. that came in. And Mike and Bob, yeah, like Laurel and Hardy or whatever. Yes. Oh my goodness, that that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, they're hilarious, but they were phenomenal at their job. Mm -hmm. So there was no uh, honeymoon phase. It was like you got there twenty four hours later. You're like, hey, get your weapon and get up there and so cover us. Not there's even no, twenty four hours. No. There's no sussing out this yeah. new guy. No, it was just we got to probably like eight, eight, to, eight to ten hours later. We yeah. already we were already uh, printing tourniquets and. Yeah. You know, dressing wounds, and then later on that day, I, I think maybe another hour or two goes by after that event, and then like a big explosion happens, and that's uh, when that they hit our partner force and right down the road in that vehicle. Truck. Yeah, well, that's like some of our workers. Is that who it was? Yeah, the little truck hit an ID. I think it killed them all. Yeah. Um, How much later? A couple two hours. It was a busy day. Yeah, took care of that whole scenario, and uh, and. It, just never stopped, I guess. Yeah. Every two or three days. It was probably every, every about three days. Mm -hmm. We'd get mortared or, you know, a little small arms fire. Oh, never a dull moment. No. <laughs> By that point, I mean, you kind of volunteered to go there. Were you like, yeah. why did I do this? Or No, that's what I wanted to go there. Yeah. And uh, there's troop chiefs like, yeah, this is the most, you know, one of the most kinetic spots. I'm like, perfect. Yeah. A couple days go by. We do some overwatches and, um, oh, we try to go kill the people that were mortaring us all the time. Remember, uh, we mm -hmm. uh, sat on the side of that hill, watching Pyramid Mountain. Yeah. Yeah. 
how do you, so was the idea like you put somebody in a position, like quietly get them into position mm-hmm. and wait for a mortar to go? Yeah. I mean, we, we kind of figured out every time we get mortared, I put it like where each mortar landed and kind of draw a straight line and uh, figure out, okay, they were using, what was it, 72 millimeter yeah. mortar tube. So figured out the max distance and then looking for possibilities where they were shooting, you know, launching from. And uh, so I, I would do that every time. And, you know, my OIC and I would sit down and look at it like, it's got to be from this little area, right? You could kind of triangulate it yourself. Yeah. And was that successful? You, you end up going out and catching them in the act? Eventually. Because they what they would do is usually three rounds and disappear. And gone. Yeah. yeah. You know, later on in the deployment, we got it wasn't a lack of bombs we dropped on hilltops. So. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, we had a pretty good mortar team. Yeah, great mortar team. Those yeah, guys are uh, awesome. They had a 120, and their sergeant was was very accurate with uh, with his with his mortars. Yeah. yeah, they could reach out to what over 7,000 meters. Yeah, we were ways out there. Yeah, they could. It was amazing mm-hmm. back that you know him and his team could do. And how how long into the into your deployment there did Sam show up? Because this was a long one for you guys. Uh, probably like four months. About five four or five months. Right yeah, there. yeah. It was like in the summertime. Mm-hmm. And did you stay the duration? Because you had you had a year long, basically, right? An eleven month. No, yeah. I think I stayed about what two months, month and a half. Well, you're supposed to be there for three weeks. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I pulled the old, there's no flight home, flights home trick. Yeah, it's going. Weather's bad. Uh-huh. Yeah. It, and, you know, he was, I, you know, he told us, he said, I want to stay here. I'm like, you're welcome to stay as long as you can. I said, I, you know, you're welcome part of this team. Mm-hmm. And everybody got, everybody got along. Everybody got, gave him, everybody gave everybody a hard time. Especially when he first got there, his carpentry skills. Oh, I, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> what what is this? <laughs> Everybody built it. We built the our bunk beds out of pallets from airdrops and uh they drop us some wood sometimes. So we built a bunch of bunk beds in this uh, it's about from here to that door in Link, right? About yeah. there. But we probably had um eight, eight or nine bunk beds in there. And everybody, you know, put a little shelf, you know, for them, you know, just customize it. We had saws, we had levels, we had measuring tapes, but Sam comes over and goes over and cuts, makes his cuts and stuff. And we're all laughing. We're all laughing at him. I mean, this, you know, this is carpentry 101. And Sam just uses his fingers and kind of just to measure. Stuff. <laughs> you like that? Yeah, that pretty much. Big. And when he, it was all said and done, you know, he was like, y'all shut the fuck up and leave me alone. And, but, you know, team guys, we just give each other a hard time. And <laughs> it also made him feel welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so we kept it up. But when he was done, one of the guys went and grabbed a level. And I'll be damned if it wasn't level. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you should have seen these guys. I mean, granted, we're living in a mud hut, right? And we built this uh, cinder block room, right? So I think it was two rooms. Was it? Yeah, it was two rooms. And all our bunk beds and they're like, oh, we have the center block rooms finally done, right? So we get out of the mud hut into a center block room with a concrete floor and build bunk beds. And these guys are out there with their lab. You think they're fucking Bob Vila, right? Well, let me get this fucking perfect. I'm gonna have this, I'm gonna have a, a, uh, a table that swings out so when I'm in bed, I could be on my computer. Like, and uh, and then they're having trouble. And I didn't I didn't care. I'm like, I'll build a bed. I, I'll figure it out, right? And uh, I waited for someone to build like the bottom part. And like, yeah, I'll throw a bunk bed up. You know, I'll throw the top bunk up there, and uh, I'll use the scraps or whatever because um, people are getting there's not much material, so people will goal garden. You know, like a straight two by four. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm like, I don't give a shit. You know, this is you guys are gonna be here a lot longer than me, so I'll, I'll go last. And uh, um, everyone, like I said, there were. Yeah, I, want to, I want to level, hey, where's the tape measure? Who's that is this? I'm like, I'll figure this out. I just like, put my arm down, you know, like this, and measure it. I'm like, okay, to my elbow to the fingertip. And then I go find a piece of wood. And, yeah. And, and that's why everybody was laughing. And we, like Omar and I were just kind of watching this. I'm like, that's pretty funny. And then when it was all said and done, damn shit was level and square. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Jeez. 
And you, I think you had mentioned, Joel, you were like, hey, yeah, we'll take a, because you knew he was a sniper at the time, right? We'll take yeah. a sniper, we'll take a team guy. Yeah. Um, as you're going out on these different ops that you have, how, how are you thinking you employ someone like that in, in that scenario? Is there any? Oh, you could always use a long gun and, or shooter. And he was, you know, he was also awesome because he's, he's like, hey, you, you just tell me where you need me. I'm like, okay, I need you on Overwatch with your 300 Win Mag, or I need you um, just come with us into the village, you know, because I'd rotate the snipers. And uh, so he was just, he was just general, all around yeah. great team guy. If wherever I needed him, he'd jump right in. Pretty yeah. common theme, I think, from our discussion, saying like your whole, yeah, anytime, I mean, what can I go do? Yeah, right. I mean, that's, how, I, that's how you have to be, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I think. Right. Yeah, and, and uh, so he was just like a plug and play. If you know, if I needed a sniper, he would uh, he'd take his, you know, wouldn't never complain, nothing, just like, hey, just tell me what you need me. What can I do? What can I do to help? Mm -hmm. Where can I best support you? Or where can I best, you know, support the team here? Although, <laughs> one time we were out and we got into a little, we were leaving a village and we got into a little firefight. Do you know where he's going already? <laughs> <laughs> I got a good idea. <laughs> Just a quick thanks to our sponsor, Factor, and we'll get right back to this combat story. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. Personally, I go for the calorie smart options, but there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition packed add-ons that help you make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. What are you waiting for? Get started today and have a feel good week of meals ready to go. Now the military bred a few things into me. One of those was eating quickly. As my fellow vets out there will attest to, I love the fact that I can get a factor meal which is healthy and fresh in less than two minutes. That is no joke, and my wife will tell you I don't waste time eating, and Factor makes it even easier for me. We also order the smoothies, and I can only manage to get my hands on one each week because my kids steal the others and drink them before I can, so they are definitely family approved. So head to factormeals.com slash combatstory50 and use code combatstory50 to get 50% off. That's code combatstory50 at factormeals.com slash combatstory50 five zero to get 50 percent off and now back to this combat story and uh he's got his 300 win mag in a side by side that i think mike and somebody else mm -hmm. are in and we're getting a little you know heading into a firefight and uh all of a sudden i seem kind of like <laughs> look you know like some caught his ear and he's kind of Looking on his face, okay. So we keep on. We, we take care of business, and he's like, "That sounded my like like my goddamn sniper rifle." <laughs> and I'm like, "You're down here. I don't know who'd shoot it." That was my sniper rifle. I know it was. <laughs> and not until later did uh, Mike come and tell you. <laughs> so we're we're in a bit of a pickle, you know, where him and I are at, and uh, I hear. Like, hmm. And I had, uh, when I went down to search those guys, I'd taken my backpack off with my 300 wind mag in it and thrown it in the back of the side by side. And then after I searched those guys, <clears throat> get ambushed pretty good, getting a gunfight. And uh, um, then him and I end up next to each other. And that's when I hear my gun go off. I'm like, oh, who the fuck is shooting my gun? Right. And I'm just jealous, you know, more than anything else. I'm like, dang it. Because I got my M4. Like, this is snappers don't like people touching their <laughs> I, I imagine, guys, yeah, they're a little. You can touch their other rifle. <laughs> don't touch their 300 wind mag. And uh, so I'm, I'm a little jealous at this point. You know, like mixed emotions. I'm getting shot at. I don't have the best gun. Someone else has my shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I'm proud of them, but I'm a little sad yeah. for myself. And uh, um, so then uh, I end up going up and finding a swamp donkey, right? And, uh, is this another person? Yeah. Nice. I'll just call him Swamp Doggy okay. for, for this, this story. And then uh, everything subsides and um, where you start leaving and uh, um, the side-by-side -side, uh, hits an ID. And this place is just littered with IDs, but it goes low order and just like blows off the back tires or something, right? It uh, just blew up the, it blew out the black back tire, but it yeah. lifted it up like that. 
and, uh, and thank you know, goodness, uh, uh, HME was wet, right? So it didn't go high order. Then um, I th- there was a couple guys. I was next to Swamp Donkey. A couple guys acting a fool over here. I think they might have like might have been a couple pop shots or something. And uh, um, right before that, uh, he asked me for a dip. He's like, "I sure no problem." So I give him a dip, and then boom, the ID goes off. And then I think we could take a couple pop shots. And because I see some guys behind this behind these rocks over here. We don't have the best uh, uh, cover where we're at. And I look over and his pants are around his ankles and his head's in between his legs and he's messing with his ass. Swap donkey? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, I, I mean, this is I, it's like a gunfight going on. Yeah. yeah. You know? And uh, he's like, dude, my hemorrhoids are hanging out of my ass and they're killing me and I can't take another fucking step. He's like, I gotta shove him back in, <laughs> and he's like, you got me. I'm like, I got you, bud. Like, <laughs> so you know, get in front of him, let him finish shoving his hemorrhoids back in his ass. No. Yeah, and then um, we're, I think we, we move a little bit, and then uh, um, I see him start gagging and it pukes a little bit. I'm like, dude, what is wrong with you now? He's like. I took the dip out that you gave me because I started to get lightheaded. And I saw shit on my fingers. And I just saw the taste of shit. <laughs> I'm like, this is a rough oh. five minutes for this guy. <laughs> right? oh my gosh. And then uh, um, the day kind of subs- – or no, that's when uh, uh, the Apaches checked on station. So we got some Apaches on station and settled everything down quite a bit. And uh, then we end up, you know, have a long walk home and uh, um, then get back and – I mean, it was just absolutely hilarious reminiscing. So, about the thing. Well, so, 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 so then, you so know, it was a, we, we get back and we do a debrief. Yeah, I'm uh-huh. de- debriefing. And I'm, I still don't know who shot my 300 women right at this point. And uh, um, this story would be a lot better if you knew Mike's personality. He was just hilarious. And uh, I'm like, oh, yeah, I got a question. I'm like, who grabbed my 300 wind mag out of the back of the side by side? And Mike was, like put his head down a little bit. He's like, that'd be me. She shoots straight. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I some effect. I'm like, who did it? Or did, did you shoot him? He's like, yeah, I, th- I think all of them, Sam. Like, <laughs> 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 oh, man. Yeah. He's like, great weapon system, you know? Uh, so when we get back, we always do a debrief. As soon as everybody got, you know, we check and make sure everybody's got all the equipment, all all the gear and everything. We start the debrief. And during that time when I see the look on his face, one of the times when him and the Swamp Donkey are, are talking, but I can't see, I can only see like from here down. And I see the look on his face and Swamp Donkey's kind of talking. And I'm, so during the debrief, after we get done, I'm like, Sam, what the hell is going on over there between you and Swamp Donkey? <laughs> And he commenced to tell a story. So we just started. Everybody was just <laughs> laughing. <laughs> yeah. Just You don't have to uh, give away who this person is, but how do you get the nickname Swamp Donkey? He's from Louisiana. Yeah. That's it? Or did something else go down? Well, I feel like this is a like a fighter pilot call sign. Well, he was also, he was, he was kind of like, if... There was any kind of bug going around, he'd get sick. They'd just start calling him Swamp Dog. <laughs> <laughs> and he was another guy who I'd never met. We were the same team, but I'd never met him. And uh, he was a different uh, troop, and he shows up. But a friend of mine let me know, hey, there, I got a good friend that's going to be down there. But shortly after he got there, he earned that name, Swamp Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't one of the guys end up banding, him, banding his hemorrhoids off out there? I think so. Did Josh put some rubber bands on there? I think he did. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah. Wow. Do they not train you on the 18 Delta course how to handle? Well, you, something yeah, like but, that? but stuff that usually that doesn't happen. No, yeah. no. not to this extent. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Not to this extent. You know, and he's also one of the guys who drank water, pump water from a place that I told him not to. I said, just go down a little bit further. Water's running pretty good down there. Him and some other guys pump water from the location, and uh, they got real sick. Oh. <laughs> I don't think I got sick out there. 
No, he was the one that was about getting sick. Mm-hmm. Did either of you guys have um, nicknames, call signs? I don't think so. Dang. Yeah. You got Sam and Joel, and this guy's got Swamp Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. It's low. It's low. It's, it fits him now. And he's a great dude. Yeah. yeah. Solid dude. So. Very solid. Very smart. <laughs> You'd never guess at it, guess it, but he's very smart. And he's a good guy. Yeah. Great guy. Great. You know, you could, you know, I, I would play with him anytime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Likewise. When uh, when you guys did have downtime, what goes on in, in that type of camp, fob, base, whatever you want to call it? We're usually planning or cleaning weapons. Working out. Yeah. We had a little Bob's Bastard gym up there. Outdoor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's like seven weights in front of a dirt wall. <laughs> <laughs> and a rolling machine and a, what was this, Kurt? The curve? The curve. Yeah. Curve treadmill. Yeah. Yeah, we had a little little gym in there. How'd you get a curved treadmill out there? Um, Airdrop well, or like no? When we de- there? when we deploy, we we have these things called flyaway kits, and one of those little I was ISU nineties, mm-hmm. um, and one part of it you can fit like a squat rack that breaks down. It's got a bench. And it's got some kettlebells, um, rubber rubber plates. Uh, Growing machine and a curved treadmill. Nice. Yeah. So, you know, when we were talking, Sam, you mentioned one of your events that happened out there mm-hmm. where Joel was present, um, kind of out out behind a rock in the middle of a. Uh, that was, it was actually the same gunfight. Was it? Yeah. <clears throat> Can was, you tell that part of it with Joel here? I'm, I'm curious how he remembers this. Um, so, we were down, as soon as they opened up on us, it was. There's three of us down there, and then um, I'm in my ballistic ball cap, and then I slide behind that rock to reload. Remember when everything started focusing on me, and I, I don't know why they picked me. Like Bob's right over there, shoot at him too. You know what I mean? And uh, um, and then I was telling Ryan that I'm, you know, it's not looking good, and I have my ball cap on. And Kenny always told me to wear my helmet, right? Wear your helmet's just for carrying the nods. So um, like, man, I don't want to take one in the top of the head because she'll be pissed at me forever. So I turn around and popped up and I'm on my knee reloading. That's when I see you work your way down to me. Then you told me, then uh, uh, we started doing some work and you told me to peel right. I know you bust my balls about this a lot before. So I'll let you, you take it yeah. from here. <laughs> now go ahead. Keep on uh, going. Yeah, what, so just, he puts out peel right. I'm like, all right, you better start shooting. Right. And then so uh, he starts shooting. And I, I'm telling you, I, I think I ran about a four two forty. I mean, I was, was quick. <laughs> uphill. There, there wasn't, there wasn't really much to hide behind. Either. <laughs> yeah, it was just go. And uh, so that's when I made it up to Sly and joined the Sly up there. That's how uh, we ended up next to each other yeah. for the duration of the of the afternoon. It was kind of funny. I mean, one time I was sure that you know he didn't get shot or anything, but watching Sam as tall as he is. Running <laughs> and ground pops up. <laughs> you know, we're we're trying, but you know, it's, it was just something that I wish we would have had a video camera for. <laughs> yeah. But you know, he he came, d- jump close to me, and then he went on <clears throat> by swamp dunk. But yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty. Yeah. Yeah. He was moving pretty fast. Why Why do you say he had given you heat before about peeling right? Just he's like, you should have seen him run in like oh, long legs. <laughs> it, it was just something that you can only you see in a movie. I mean, it was like, it, you know, but he, he was moving. He was doing what he was supposed to. But it was it was just. I was just trying not to get shot. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's funny because in, even in firefights and stuff, we're still cracking jokes. We still crack yeah. jokes, mm-hmm. and never that's, that's where we are. And. You know, watching him run, you know, and those pop shots are, you know, okay, he's he's fine, but it was just entertaining. Yeah, you know? I, I never let him live that down. <laughs> I was I was real sad to leave that place. You know, out of all things, when the, we moved the shitter outside facing the river, huh. or, I mean, it was a fifty-five gallon drum with plywood and a toilet seat drilled the top of your shit and diesel fuel and burned it. But uh, um, moved it outside, and you can look out that window and look at the river, and I'm, like, it is beautiful. You know, and the camaraderie we had out there was through the roof. Right? We had 
a lot of humor, a lot of messing with each other. And then fortunately I had to, uh, I had to leave. But then when I left, um, oh, yeah. I get back to Wolverine, right? Where, uh, where we were out of. And there's a little PX there, or like a little corner store, you know, corner store, or whatever you want to call it, has, you know, you can get your Snicker bars and uh, monsters and everything like that. So I'm like, I, <clears throat> and we made friends with the Kiowa pilots because they'd fly out, you know, uh, and check on us. And if we had gotten a gunfight, they'd come help us out. And I knew them before because they were all out of Wolverine. So I walked up there and got a face to face with them. And uh, so I made, um, care speed. packages for like speed balls. So care packages for everybody. And, uh, I put them in bags, like, like this for Joel, tons of candies, chips, you know, any, any goodies I can, I can make, you know, I got, I individualized them all. Right. And, uh, um, but before that to mess with guys around our camp, um, I bought this huge dildo. <laughs> they had those in Wolverine. I, I ordered it offline, or I, okay. had, or I had Katie send it to me, or something. Right? <laughs> like she got it offline, but I, I ordered you got something it. important. You yeah, do, honey. Right? and yeah. we just we just our country. <laughs> we just mess with people. We, we put it in people's bags and things like yeah. that. Right? I make everyone their individual, like real nice care package. Then for our UOD buddy Bob, uh, I just put that in a bag and wrote, "Bob, go fuck yourself." <laughs> <laughs> so the and I bring it. I, then I go bring it up to the pilots. I'm like, hey, and I, I think I uh, wrapped it all in duct tape. Yeah, it was like this big. Yeah, and it was all the little ones together. Correct. Right. I'm like, hey, I need you to fly over and like just kick this out the door because I don't think they're legally allowed to land or I'm not too sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm like, just get real close and kick this out the door for them. And uh, from Sam. And uh, they're like, all right, cool. Well, you know, it's hard to communicate back and forth. Like, I can't just pick up the phone and call yeah. them. So it's a, a while goes by. And till I run into everybody again. And it was, I look at Bob, Bob's like, really, Sam? <laughs> like, everyone has Twix. They have like, because the food's hard to come by out there, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, we didn't have a store. <laughs> yeah. We lived up in the mountains. Really eating MREs or once in a while we'd go back and get what, Marmites, you know? So yeah. we'd drive back, get some kind of warm food. But, uh, um, but then I heard you guys took someone's blowout kit out of their pocket right and yeah oh, that's right <laughs> you get a blowout kit you know that is like yeah. uh, your, 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 your med pouch that you have and like you either put in your cargo right. pocket or uh somewhere on your belt or you know a universal place where everyone can get to it um they took his med kit out and put that dildo in there and he ran with it oh. like on a handful right. of ops right. and then eventually found it right that's what i heard well we were doing a debrief and uh, I can't remember who it was that walked and, you know, so-and-so gets this award today and he went into it and he's like, what are you doing? And he goes, okay. He opened up his, he pulled that out and he's like, what if I would have got shot? He would have shoved that in your hole. <laughs> <Pull it out."> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was a funny, funny, very thought out care package because yeah. he actually sent me um, beef jerky sticks because the dog. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And, uh, the OIC, he was a little shorter guy. He sent him a, a, a little pickle. I don't know where he found it. He said, little Pepe. <laughs> it's a little a dill pickle. No, you call him little, you know, it's little Pepe. Even though you hurt my feelings because you didn't know who, who uh, Babs, McG Babs was. I know. It was, it was uh, Babs. What was her name? No, because we named all our side-by-sides yeah. porn, porn star names. Yeah. And it was Babs. No. Yeah. Flower tushy. Oh. <laughs> hey, what's a side by side when you say that? It's like a Kawasaki mule or a Kawasaki T Rex or a um, Polaris Razor. One of those. And I'm going to take credit for since I named it Flower Tushy and the amount of rounds that thing took and kept going. You know, I mean, and our OIC was busting my ball. She's like, she looks like she belongs in Sturgis. I'm like, Hey, you have your flavor. I have mine, bud. You just, know, that's why there's menus. Let's just not judge each other here. <laughs> Let's keep it open mind. Yeah. So I caught a lot of hell for that, too. Oh, yeah. You send another guy that's always, like, really lean. You send him some chocolate bars because you, you call them fat. <laughs> and he had a, you know, a little self-conscious about self -conscious. that. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was so a you different. remember getting the, that? Oh, yeah, because they're like, they called in and one of the guys came up, hey, you got a helicopter bringing in something. I'm like, what? What's a Kyler bringing? And so 
you get by and send a couple of guys out there, and the guy kind of just comes in, just barely touches, kicks out, and says, that's from Sam. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, yeah, it worked out well. Yeah, was, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, it was it was a it was a very well thought out. I mean, he had it individualized everything on in there. I wish I could remember everything that was in there. I forgot about the little Pepe. I forgot about all that. Did you yeah. sit there and like plan out everybody's? Mm-hmm. Did yeah. You, like oh, yeah. Sam, did you have a list that you yeah. were making? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and, and you know, limited supplies in this little store, so and I'm trying to like cater uh, to each person. So I spent a lot of time in there putting them together. I don't have anything that's else crazy. to do. But. It had to be a small PX, right? Oh, it was tiny. Yeah. But it's creative. Yeah. It's creative. Yeah, very creative. On on the op that you were just talking about, or the, the gunfight where you sprint, mm-hmm. you, know, you hit the combine 4-2. Um, Joel, why did you come out in the open? I don't know if it's in the open. It sounds like you kind of had to make your way to him. Why mm-hmm. Why did you do that? No, it was we, when we got contacted, it was really, it was just like a sloping terrain. And I think I hopped in a little water trench about this deep, you know, but it was dry. It was like almost where water ran off. And he came, flopped by me, and then went on. You worked your way down to me a bit, though. Yeah, I think. It, yeah. it was just, there was nothing nothing to hide behind. I mean, it was we were sucking dirt. Yeah. Know, it's in little rocks. It, I think the way you told it, Sam, it makes it sound more like you you kind of gave up whatever little cover you had well, to you, kind of work your way. You that's know, what I remember. To, you had to. You I remember you working your way down to me a bit to give me some relief. Yeah. It, it was what you had to do, though. Yeah. You know, they were taking, they were, they were, their shots weren't accurate, but they were close enough. And so we had to go down and provide some suppressive fire so he could move up and, you know, we could inch up mm-hmm. a little ways. It, it was comical. Yeah. yeah. Any other uh, hairy engagements that you all had together that you remember? Yeah, I didn't remember IEDs all the damn yeah. time. Yeah, bombs. When that side by side guy shot up, when uh, OIC and uh, JTAC was in there. Yeah. That was that was a messy day. I mean, side by sides have no cover, right? No. Are we're they both. open top? Yeah. Right? I mean, like yeah. I, I think of a Polaris. They're not mm-hmm. a bombard or nothing. Yeah. They said, how we get from point A to point B yeah. a little faster? <laughs> Turn into bullet traps sometimes. Yeah. But you usually put them on like, like an overwatch <laughs> where they go in at night. Um, you don't bring them in mm-hmm. to the village. How'd they end up, like, in that case, so you got your OIC and JTAC, they're getting shot up in one of those? Well, that was a that was a different kind of... What happened was we'd been working out near Khaki Afghan area. We'd been tr- uh, working with some other... Um, another SEAL team and some Afghan nationals, and uh, we went out there for... A couple of days and we came back to Fob Lane and I woke up. I was, like I said, I was having trouble sleeping. So I woke up like probably three hours later and uh, I hear mortars you know, going off. So I go into Fob Lane's talk and I hear VSP Bog saying that they're getting mortared too. So I wake up. We wake up all the guys, so we head to our site, and that I think that whole firefight and just constant mortaring and shooting went on for about eight hours that day. And uh, so when we got there, our little Afghan unit, the or we call them the little militia, they'd gone out and they they were in a little bit of a firefight. So OIC and JTAC went out to go see, you know, what was going on because to call in a, you know, airdrop, you know, any kind of bombs at this point, you had to be like, if I would have gone, it would have been questioned a lot. OIC, not, you know, not, not, not supposed to be questioned that much, but they got lit up. So they, they hopped out of that side by side and took cover, but they were pinned down. They couldn't. They couldn't go anywhere. So at that point, we had some, I think we had some Kiowas and some Apache come in eventually. 
But I sent out because the, our fob, our, our little mud compound was getting also attacked. You know, pop shots and mortars. I got together a group of guys, sent them out to go try to support the OIC and the JTAC. And at the same time, I was trying to coordinate us here, you know, because of my army guys and my CBs and I had a couple of team guys also that were trying to man the guns and trying to, you know, keep eyes out and make sure nobody came up on us. But he went out leading the group and, you know, they got into a little bit out there, but then he had clear sight of what was going on and trying to get the, you know, permission to drop and kept on no, no, no. Yeah. Eventually they, they dropped. But I think it was Omar making the call. Just overriding. Just overriding. Yeah. And so you do whatever it takes. Because I was on the phone. I was on the radio with the, you know, with the main base. And it was like, nope, nope, nope. They didn't even want us to be shooting the 120 millimeter mortar. Man. Yeah. Were they watching you all like through a drone feed or something? And that's how they're overriding? They're just... Hear the target, and they're like, "We're not clearing it." I don't know. It was just I couldn't understand what was going on, yeah. why they would question. I mean, you got guys that are pinned down that can't even move anywhere because they'll get shot up. And you know, I got another group of guys that got a good view of what's going on. Another JTAC on the ground, and still nothing. So finally, though, I see. Yes, told them override it. Yeah, pretty political at that point in the game, too. You know. Yeah. Um, and change, you know, all the changes that Obama made, you know, and uh, about operating at nighttime didn't allow that, you know. So to do anything at nighttime took an act of Congress, right? And it got a lot of people hurt. Yeah, for sure. All the politicians do. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so you have to, you know, <laughs> change your tactics. And then you're out there, you're doing, I mean, you're doing shit in broad daylight. And right? that's not cool. No. Right? Uh -huh. But were, were you guys, the Bin Laden raid did, I, I should remember better. Was it, it was 2010, right? You guys were there. Oh, that's 2011? Yeah. yeah. Were you guys over there when that went down? Yeah. We were at, right. in our VSP site. Yeah, I was, I was at, at our site. What was the feeling? I mean, I was at the agency by then, like back in D.C., and I, I still remember that. Like, were you guys being in the teams? What was that? You know, we were still out operating. We didn't know until we got back, like, the next day. Yeah. We started seeing some of the news feed. Same thing with me. We were out on a hop. We got back. I went to bed, woke up, and I have a bunch of emails. And uh, it was just me and my OIC. And, like, I hope you were there. Congratulate. Like, just... But none, none of them said, you know, like Osama bin Laden's dead. Uh, and, um, but I'm reading through it. I'm like, interesting. So I walk out front. I'm like, that's my OIC. I'm like, did someone kill Osama bin Laden last night? He goes, yeah. How do you know? I'm like, I just got some emails. And it's the only thing that kind of makes sense. And uh, he's like, yeah, it happened, you know, last night. And it was, you know, these guys and so on and so forth. So. And they, they, some of the people writing to you thought you were on the raid? Yeah, I mean, people... I, yeah, they still know. Yeah. Right. yeah. I was. I had nothing to do with it, yeah. you know. Jeez. But uh, it's moral support. Yeah. 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 They're probably <laughs> yeah. Sam's in country. This yeah. is the time. Yeah. We gotta do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, I would imagine it's a pretty... Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's the same community that okay. got the mission and, and delivered it. Was there... It's kind of hard to explain that. One. Is it? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's all good, right? He he needed to dice it. Yeah. And uh the means and the who, I guess, doesn't matter as much unless you're, you know, wanna be the one that say you shot Osama Bin Laden, yeah. right? And uh um, but yeah, I think it's fair. Fair. It's a good good W for NSW, yeah. you know what I mean? G exactly. Yeah. I guess that's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah, it yeah. Would probably feel like that. Yeah. It's good W for America. Yeah. yeah. I had no, I didn't have a fucking thing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> if I was there, um, you mentioned <laughs> I would have missed. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
you'd mentioned, you said this when we were talking, Joel, and then you just brought it up here. A lot of MREs were consumed oh, yeah. at, at the bog. Did you guys have a, a favorite or are there some you will never touch again? Well, when we first got there, it was a cold weather MREs, which are a lot like Mountain House, freeze dried. Yeah. Like, those things are good. When you get to the regular MREs, yeah, it's just kind of hit or miss. There's some that I, could, I if I could, I would stay away from. But if you didn't have a choice, you know, you'd try really whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But we got, we got care packages that had some food. Mm -hmm. So we'd make our own little snacks and, you know, meals sometimes. But, you know, when, when it comes down to it, though, those MREs are, they're designed for a reason and they work. Yep. Mm -hmm. They all have a, that same flavor after a mm -hmm. while, though. So, you know, <clears throat> I, I, uh, I'm easy to please. I, I'll, I'll eat anything. I, I could really give two shits. I would shits. say you're the same way. And, uh, but I had, I had, a, there was a madness to my method, you know, like I've saved the jalapeno cheese for when I had the, the cheese tortellini. So I'd make a spicy cheese tortellini. Nice. And then if you, um, you could save your jelly and make yourself, and the peanut butter to make yourself, and, uh, that really dry bread that's horrible. Uh, but you could save, save that and you have a peanut butter jelly for the go. Um, if you save the jalapeno cheese and the meat patties and the bread, and uh, then you can make yourself a cheeseburger. Uh, so you, you learn to become yeah. a little MRE chef. You yeah. know, <laughs> it's a little gourmet yeah. action going on out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but you don't you don't ever take the whole package. Uh, you yeah. always take it takes things out that you don't you know you're not going to use, just to slim it down. Everything you know when you're patrolling up there in the mountains, ounces lead to pounds. So you try to you know slim it down as much as, as you much can. As you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, if I was going to take anything extra, it's going to be ammo and water. Yeah. You mentioned the camaraderie in that unit, Sam. What uh, what would you attribute that to? I mean, you've been in a bunch of teams. You've had teams. Um, I think it was just the people that were involved, and they were okay with um, being in a real shitty situation. Like, everyone just accepted for what it was. Like, yeah, we're living in a mud hut. I, I remember we finally got that jug full of water to shower on and we all took we took showers and everyone felt good and you know believe it or not i had pretty long hair and everyone had long hair and like you just walk them around to the roof like you just got a shower someone like someone had a bar of soap or something you know okay. and uh like we're all walking around and like taking pictures of each other like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little things that just made a big difference yeah, yeah. and like if you're gonna be out there stuck in a place that sucks so bad, it's no place rather than you know have your brothers with you. Yeah, and we had a good good camaraderie out there that just everybody got along, mm -hmm. and not yeah. a lot of complaining. I think it sounds like just like yeah. hey, this is gonna suck. And there's you know? nothing to. I mean, you could complain, I guess, but like nothing's getting better. No. So yeah, no no sense in using your you know using your energy to complain. Yeah. Like I said, when we got a George Foreman, that was that was a huge step up for us. I don't know if I was there for that. I don't remember George Foreman. Well, we had a George Foreman. We started getting chicken and burger patties and stuff getting dropped in. And so we'd, you know. Eating high on the hog. Yeah, yeah. we were. <laughs> you guys have a coffee machine, coffee maker, or anything? Yeah. There was a coffee maker out there. A lot of guys drink coffee or dip. You know, help them stay awake. Um, if we go out somewhere, they, you know, the dip to stay awake. So they also the MREs came with coffee. Mm -hmm. That's instant, true. Instant coffee. Yeah. yeah, it's not the greatest. Yeah, didn't bother me. You can make it work. Yeah, yeah, it just came with an absurd amount of copa hanging and a good attitude. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much <laughs> all. You need. Yeah, it's all you needed out there. It was everybody worked, worked well together and just made it. A fun place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you guys plan on going to the training follow on together? Was that a discussion? You said you ended up um, working together. We, we did, right? but after my deployment there, I got orders to go to Bahrain. I got rewarded somehow to go for one year in a company to Bahrain. And when I got back from there, this when I actually went to and ran. Um, with the dog program that we had mm -hmm. and I trained uh, our 
support personnel or techs on, you know, small arms firing and uh, shooting skills and Humvee driving. You know, I run a course for them. And somewhere around there is when... So that makes sense. So I got home from that. I did another, a whole nother pump. You yeah. went to Bahrain. I did a whole nother pump. Then after that, two, after those two years, that's when we probably went to land warfare. Around. So yeah. I, I get there a little before you, I think. You were there before. Yeah. Because you were already the mayor of uh, Fort, Fort Smith. Fort Fun. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just knew. I mean, war. he just knew uh, like everybody. Like if you want to go get something, Sam knew where to go. Oh, it wasn't like a role that you were playing. Mm-hmm. No, no. Like, you know, I, we just call him, outside or We just call him yeah. the mayor. You know, uh, it was just, I don't know, when I, when I got there, it was, it was like a quick fail because somebody was leaving, somebody had just left and they needed somebody to, just a quick fail and they pull me in there and I'm like, oh yeah, I can work with that guy. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so we taught, uh, small unit tax or land warfare as we call it out at Fort Chaff- Chaffee, Arkansas. So we were gone a ton, like a, like a lot, something I had to ask Katie, but I, it was more than half the year we spent out there. Jeez. We almost went three straight months out there. Mm-hmm. That's when I took the bikes. And uh, so, you know, I became, when I first got there, I'm like, well, I'm just not going to sit here and feel sorry for myself. So I went out in town, uh, you know, I met bar owners. I went up to Fayetteville, met bar owners up there um, and just started meeting people and talking and that, I'm like, I want to establish a good relationship between NSW and a lot of the, um, a lot of business owners out here. That way when guys come in and get in with the police department and everything that way, when guys come in and if worst case, I get in a bar fight, I already know the owner, right? So bring this bar owner out to the range shooting, you know, and just st- strategic relationships, yeah. you know, to help buy down on some risk later on. Huh. Uh-huh. Yep. And, uh, that's, that's smart. Ways. That's a long ways. <laughs> And it worked out, you know, and then uh, got to where we we're going to, up to Fayetteville and watching baseball games and one of the restaurant or suites, you know, a lot. And just, uh, it, it was, a, it was a lot of fun. That's you cool. Know? Yeah. On one of those trips, I, uh, I told them I was taking my motorcycle and they all like, okay, that would be good. So I gave everybody my garage code. Tell them put your bikes in there with wheel chocks and uh, straps. And I said next morning, Eric came over, and we rigged the trailer to haul all the bikes. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so Sam drives a fat boy. Oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> There's a story for Sam in here. <laughs> all right. You know, with ape hangers, and uh, so we start loading them. Move, we'll start getting them out of the garage and everything. And I think Eric goes and gets on Sam's bike and the handlebars. Move like this. They're, they're not that loose. I mean, if you pulled on them, you could move them, but like okay. they're not just sitting in there. No, they're, they're all willy nilly. <laughs> <laughs> they were, they were <laughs> loose. <laughs> they were loose. So Eric goes, Hey, look at this. And he's going like this. I'm like, only Sam. You're like, I knew it was Sam, right. but only Sam. That's the way he rolls. And I said, well, we need to tell him that, you know, that needs to get fixed. That's a, that's a that's a hazard waiting to happen. So we load up all the bikes and I, you know, take the truck and the trailer and my dog with me, which my dog was Sam's favorite. <laughs> I fucking hate that dog. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It would bite me. <laughs> he was a retired working dog. That yeah, did, that, did, was, that didn't like me. He didn't like anybody. Yeah. It took him a while before he got warmed up to me. Never warmed up to me. But uh, <laughs> so, so took all the bikes down there, and we'd go for rides. And I don't know. It was probably there's so many ride, nice riding um, roads down there that, like, if we weren't working for the weekend, we were all out doing something on bikes. That's mm-hmm. great. Yeah, yeah. And I think you went to a wedding. Oh, I went to Morgan Latrell's wedding. Yep. <laughs> uh, I dr- drove it to Texas, maybe. I think so. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Or, or somewhere. Yeah, I think in Texas. Yeah. Is that Latrell's brother? Yeah. Yeah. They're twins. Oh, interesting. he's a congressman now. That one. Got it. 
So you were saying that decision to bring the bikes wasn't a popular one. For, I mean, popular with the guys. No. Not it, popular with. It wasn't. When I did this in the platoon, it wasn't popular with certain people. Okay. But they saw that the guys who were riding the bikes were going to stay out of the bars, you know, so it would alleviate some of the risks. <laughs> I, I think it's an interesting play, actually. Like anything you could do. Yeah. Because in, like in Fort Smith, really there's not a lot to do there. I mean, the we, bars stay open to like four in the morning, so you can get a lot dangerous. of trouble. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we would frequent one bar that we played uh, shuffleboard. <laughs> Sam and I were the reigning champs. Yeah. <laughs> As a team, yeah, we, yeah. Ne- we never got beat, did we? I don't know, but we we held the title for a long time. <laughs> yeah. if we did, I don't remember, but uh, we mm. ran that place. Yeah, Matt would switch partners. Yeah, he'd, he'd get somebody else, and he thought he was going to get close and. I think we'd let them get a few points up on us, and then we'd come back and <laughs> wipe them out. Yeah, it's a fun little town. Yeah. Yeah. But they're just, other than going to bars, really, so taking the motorcycles out there was great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I got to go on pig trail, and I did all kinds of riding out there. Is this where the story that you sent me happens with him getting grazed? Yes. Can you tell that? Oh, I, so we had the same position. Uh, so we'd work two different ranges, right? So uh, for folks, you know, have, don't have a clue what land warfare is. It's small unit tactics, but in a uh, rural um, area. So for example, for this, it was Fort Chaffee, which is heavily like woodland area with micro train. Some, some areas had significant, you know, train, but mainly you're dealing with, you know, uh, micro train and there's some macro train in there and um, we have targets that pop up that simulate someone shooting at you and then you maneuver accordingly right so they'll you know flank you um, and uh, so I'm running I'd run one range he'd run another and there we had someone else out there too right so someone else would uh, run the other range so we'd run three lines of training simultaneously and there was three three of us and we all, um, uh, three chiefs out there and we all had uh, he was a senior chief but we all had a uh, um, the same position on each range, mm-hmm. right? So this is on a di- different range. I'm just hearing it over the radio. Like <laughs> someone shot Joel. I'm like, well, this isn't good, right? And then I hear, or or maybe I, I hear on the radio or get a text message. He's pissed and just drove and left the range. I'm like, at least he's okay. So I, I, I don't hear anything until I get back. <laughs> Joel, let's get this story. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> and just for people listening, I mean, when you mentioned it earlier, you're like, I got grazed. And so I'm curious what the wound was on this. So, like you said, we've got these targets that pop up and when we give a range brief, there's one direction that you that we always brief, you will not shoot. So like I said, we'll have west, north, and east, and come, you will not shoot south. So that kind of tries to help them stay on their ball game about their whereabouts, have a little situational awareness. So we pushed them in, up into this point, and then we have a guy with that's controlling targets, and I'm just telling them which targets to pop up. And with each one of these, like almost like fire teams, we have a a, a guy that's working with us, a range safety officer. Also, I was like we were the range sa- uh, officers in charge, but we have range safety officers that are amongst the group, the shooters. So once we get to a certain point, I started like overwhelming them. So where they have to peel back or they either make a decision to peel back or set up a, a flanking position or something. So they're peeling back, peeling back. And so we're coming south now, and no shooting south. And they get to the last position and I hop, jump up on this rock. And at the time I had a cast on because um, my dog, I don't know, somebody kicked a ball and he went after it and kind of stretched some ligaments in here and tendons. So they, the orthopedics. Were you blaming me on that? No. I, <laughs> I, I got that. I got yeah. that. No, like, so, somebody kicked the ball. I like somebody did. Sam did kick yeah. this ball. No, um, Sam, Sam didn't ever really mess with that dog. No. Sam didn't have healthy response. Wanted nothing to do with that dog. <laughs> nope. That dog was. When I first started working with him to try to adopt him, he was an asshole. 
He would bite anybody and everybody except the handler or the trainers and me for some reason. But he, he was, and everybody in, he, I'd walk him through the compound and people would be like, hey, McGuire, is that fucking diesel? And yeah, you want to say hi? Fuck no. The tr- <laughs> dog tried to eat me on deployment. <laughs> great dog. Never missed a bomb or nothing, but great dog, but no, fuck no. Keep uh, him away from me. You know, so anyway, so I had a cast on because the ortho doc, when I went to go see him, he's like, I'm going to put you in the cast. I'm like, it's not broken. He's like, but I know you guys, if I put you in a brace, you're going to take it off and you're going to injure it worse. I'm going to have to end up doing surgery on you. So I'm going to put you in the cast. I'm like, okay. So, you know, when you got a cast on, you're always moving it, kind of trying to, I don't know, it just makes you feel better in there if you rotate your arm. So I hopped up on this rock and I was kind of just watching, observing. All of a sudden I see a laser come my way and I reached for my horn and three shots went off as I hit my horn. And air horn. You know, it's uh, like cease fire. And all yeah. That. And one so of the you rounds, saw it coming though. Like you saw oh, yeah. the laser coming your way. <laughs> yeah. And one of the rounds just kind of barely grazed me. Want to get the fat part of your hand or your thumb? Yeah, just the fat part. Yeah. Right On here. the same hand that you had the cast or the Yep. Yeah. But the thing is, like I was standing there like this, so there was only this much room between my hand and my leg. Oh my gosh. You know, my body. So he put three rounds right through it in there somewhere. So they were probably about 30 yards, 30, 40 yards away. So I blew the horn. I got on the radio and told the RSOs who shot that. Asked them who shot that. Everybody safe and clear. And uh, make sure everybody's safe and clear. And I'm going to go get diesel. <laughs> Somebody's about to get this. <laughs> no, and I started running through all these scenarios in my head. First, I want to kill a kid, whoever shot. But one of those things where if you call it in, they're going to make you shut down the ranges. So we're going to have all these guys just sitting around waiting for an investigation. So, you know, I was like, okay, that's the right thing to do, but we don't, we can't afford to have guys just sitting around doing nothing, you know, while somebody investigates and it, you know, so whatever. And I did, I, when I told RSOs, I, I'll be right back. So I just went to my truck with diesel and uh, kind of hung out for a little bit, let myself cool down. I got the platoon chief and I said, I talked to them and told them to head back. And about that time, the guy was next to me in the range. Something happened that he couldn't finish the runs. He, he needed one more run for that platoon. So I went over there and, and filled in for him. It was Sam? Uh, no, no, it's Samar. Yeah. So I don't know why he had to leave. Some happened that he had to leave, but they needed to do one more run. So I went over there and filled in. Kind of also gave me a little chance to get away from whoever shot me. And so I told, uh, but I got on the phone with the our boss was uh, Matt, and I said, "Hey, get the troop chief and the platoon chief." And after I get done with this run, I said, I'll come to the office and I, I want to talk to him. So I decided, and I ran this through Matt. I'm like, okay, if I, I want to talk to the troop chief and the platoon chief, see if this kid is just a screw up or if he is actually a good guy, just fucked up royally here. And he's like, all right, why? I said, well, if he's a good guy, this right here would pretty much kind of end, end, or it's got to put a huge black Yeah, that could be a big deal. Yeah, right? it's a career ender. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, but if he's a screw up, then I'll put that nail in that coffin. Yeah. I said, but I want to hear from them. You know, I want to hear from the troop chief. And it turns out troop chief and I, we go back a ways, you know, we were in buds together. So when I talked to him, he goes, no, nah, he's actually a really squared away guy. And I said, well, should I be thankful that he's a bad shot? And he's like, well, he's actually one of our best shots. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. So I talked to him about it and I ended up writing him up. But, you know, we had an agreement. As long as he kept sling, clean slate the rest of and still performed well, the rest of uh, the workup, that I destroyed wow. this. 
Yeah. He had to have known how big a deal that was too. Right. I assume yeah. so. Well, uh, um, his, his troop chief <laughs> let him may, may let him know. <laughs> yeah. So we wouldn't want to be on his bad side. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, you know, and it turned out, you know, he, he came, he was a great team, he came out to be a great team guy. Jeez. Yeah. So that was my, you know, all these, all these deployments and, you know. You think you're in the clear? Yep. Thought I was in the clear and got grazed by my, you know, friendly. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, um, guys, anything else from uh, your time together that's worth uh, worth sharing here before we wrap? Well, I don't think so. I got maybe just a question <laughs> separate from y'all's time together, but just the amount of time you spend in the teams, especially in leadership positions. If you got somebody listening here who wants to go and be a SEAL, what would you tell them is like one or two of the most important things that they should be thinking about or working on to be successful? Mental. I mean, I'm going to default to just be the most aggressive person in the room all the time and work hard. Shut up. Shut up, listen, and work hard. Get, and get it in your head. Little shit doesn't matter. It's not that difficult. There's just a bunch of pussies that show up. You know what I mean? Like, budget's is that hard. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's not about lifting or like that physical side. Neither of you is saying that necessarily. It's physical, but it's, yeah. it's more of it. It's mental and just keeping an open mind. You got to look at things in a different perspective. Like, you know, when you're at Bud's, you got to look at, it. look, I'm getting paid to live on the beach. I got personal trainers. <laughs> I got. I just got to be. I've never heard it put like that. <laughs> um, yeah, I got personal trainers here yeah. training me. Um, I just got to be at the right place at the right time with the right gear and the right attitude. You know, and you can't look at it as I'm going to get beat all day. You know, because you'll beat yourself and and yeah. quitting. But if you got to just look at it differently, and like you said, you just got to work. You know, you don't. You want to be the dirt bag that gets always, you know, fails inspections or fails runs or anything like that because you'll start, you'll start standing out. So you want to, you want to start performing from the get go, you know, keep your mouth shut and just do what you're told. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it guys. Thanks so much. Um, and then for those who haven't seen the other interviews, definitely check it out, but we've been using the, the outsider. Um, and that one we didn't show before, but if you want to like give it a... So this is the PM, yeah. and it has... It's hard koozie. It fits everything from seltzer to your beer cans. The best part about it is you don't have to take the top off to reload. <laughs> to reload. <laughs> you know I mean? That's perfect. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys, for yeah. coming out here. And uh, we're heading to a game here in just a minute, watching the, the Niners and the Packers. So yeah. should be fun. Cool. Appreciate you, buddy. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed that combat story. Obviously, this is the first time we've had two guys on at the same time who served in combat together. And it's pretty unique and special, obviously, to hear them talk and reminisce about these moments that were so impactful to them. Um, as you can tell, I'm a little bit under the weather, but still wanted to say thanks to all of you for sticking around and, and listening this far in. And just being fans of ours for, for this long, it means a ton. I'm definitely not going to um, take that for granted. So we got a few comments here from uh, from listeners, but just real quick as a reminder, um, if you want to support the show, I would absolutely ask that you comment, like, and subscribe on whatever platform it is that you use. Five-star review on Spotify or Apple goes a long way. A positive comment for the guest or the community on YouTube is also great. And obviously, if you can subscribe and turn on notifications on YouTube, much appreciated. It helps in every little way. Also, you can help the show. We've got a Patreon page. That's so patreon.com slash combat story, where you can help us fund this program, get better uh, guests, and uh, get better quality audio and video as we continue to grow. But with that, a couple comments from listeners. The first is from George C. Young Jr. And it's on the Sam Mackey round two interview on YouTube. And he says, love this guy's laid back demeanor. I immediately went online and bought one of his AM outsider drinkware mugs, former CB. And then another one from Tom Gronk, I think, G-R-N-K. And this is from a shorter segment, but also from the Sam Mackey 
interview and he goes, Soprato, we love you guys too. And obviously, if you listen to the Sam Mackey round two, you know that that's how they, these Lithuanian units that uh, Sam was embedded with. This is how they kicked off one of their ambushes and probably multiple. But in this particular case, it was Soprato. <laughs> and then they just leveled this place. Uh, so it's a, it's a great uh, call out in the comments. And we had an interesting one from Gun Websites. And this is also on the Sam Mackey round too. He says, 80th thumbs up. Thank you for an awesome series of interviews. I look forward to my Saturday chores because I can listen to your newest episode while I work. Just to let you know, I used your code to sign up for the four month package at Mint Mobile and it's working great. It was an excellent second carrier to use while traveling, which is what I did. Good coverage, fast speeds, just so you know you're promoting a decent service to help support the show. That means a ton to hear. I know not everybody <laughs> listens to the ads, but um, I do appreciate it. And I used Mint Mobile for the exact same thing. So thank you for, for leaving that comment. And then the last one is a comment from Ken Kessner on the Black Hawk Down Setting the Record Straight interview that we posted with Brad Thomas. Um, if you didn't catch this one, this is former guest Brad Thomas, who was in, he was in Black Hawk Down, like the actual event as a ranger at the time. And he went on to serve in the unit later. Um, and now he's in the band Silence and Light, a very accomplished, soft-spoken guy. But he was setting the record straight on something that he said during his original interview that a listener caught who was also in that fight and wanted to set the record straight. And Brad, being a very stand up guy, said, we're going to set the record straight immediately. Called me the same day, said, how can we get this on air so I can apologize? Um, so the comment here is from Ken Kessner, and he says, good talk. It's always difficult to apologize or say I made a mistake. Good man. And then another one from Glenn Slayton said, Integrity and accountability this is one of the reasons why this man and the others are the best on the planet. And just so you all know, um, Derek Natalini, another former guest and unit member, uh, reached out to me just on text, said, uh, thanks for doing that. It means a lot um, for somebody to stand up and admit something like that. But it's important that we set the record straight on it. So with that, I hope you all are doing well. Um, after this episode, don't know what you're doing in your day. Um, I'm getting ready to go into my day job. So I hope you all are, are doing well and staying safe. See you soon.